Well, welcome back. This is part two of Genetics for Beginners. We're going to pick it up while I explain about X-linked traits as well as codominance and uh, incomplete dominance. There's also a thing called sexed, uh, or excuse me, X-linked traits. They're found on sex cells. And uh, if you know uh, this, males are males primarily because of two chromosomes, an X and a Y chromosome. And females are females primarily because of two chromosomes, an X and an X. So there are some traits that actually are linked on these, not on the autosomal ones or the other uh, chromosomes, but on the sex chromosomes. For instance, let's look at color blindness. It affects mostly males because it is an X linked trait. For instance, uh, in, in a male, uh, the sperm will make X gametes and Y gametes. In females, it only makes X gametes or X chromosomes. We're going to put the two X's here just so it doesn't confuse you. Sometimes what happens is females will carry the actual trait of color blindness, we'll call it C, on one of the, the two. It's, it's rare for, for females to have it on both X, although there are some. So, for instance, if this sperm cell fertilizes this egg, we're going to get X with a big C and a regular X. And over here we have two big X's. So we have one female carrier and one normal carrier, or normal sided, not colorblind. If this Y sperm fertilizes that eggs, you get an X and a Y with the trait for colorblindness on one X, and then an X and a Y, another male. So in this case, this male, because it doesn't have another X, uh, one to kind of um, shade it or, or, or uh, mask it, it has just a Y chromosome, it, it, it'll actually, this particular male will be colorblind. This male will be colorblind. And that's what we call X-linked traits. So that is that one. And then there's two other ones called codominance and incomplete dominance. Uh, a co-dominance -do means that both traits are trying to get out. They're trying to kind of fight it out to see uh, which one will be shown. And in cattle and coat cuddle, <laughs> excuse me, cattle, coat color, so um, there is a, um, a coat color issue in some cattle, and that's a co-dominant trait, coat color in cattle. For instance, in this particular picture, if you look at this, this this big guy right here, this champion, and of course this uh, cow right here, and this is their offspring right here, you'll notice that they have a little bit of everything here. They have a little bit from mom uh, uh, over here, we have a little bit from dad over here, and there isn't really one sh masking out the other one. So uh, let's just call uh, uh, coat colors here. For instance, in this one, we're going to call this one W, and then uh, we're going to call this one red. Both of them are fighting out for dominance. Not one's not going to be better than the other, so that's why we give them a different, uh, a different uh, letter than we've done before. Like for instance, on the male, which will be over here, this white guy over here, he's a big W, big W, and the cow, she's a red cow, so she's going to get a big R and a big R. And when this sperm fertilizes that egg, we get big R, excuse me, and big W, big W, big R, and so on. And in every case, we get this. This is called a roan color. Little, a little bit uh, of red, a little bit of white. There's no blending like a pink. Uh, what you get is both colors coming out to kind of uh, uh, show their particular trait. So one's not recessive. They're both dominant, so they call it co-dominant. So, and then... Um, so that one, that, that's how that works. Now, incomplete dominance, on the other hand, um, not, not either trait really is dominant per se. And what happens is instead of they both come out, they kind of both blend together. And this happens in snapdragons in particular. If we take a look at this particular problem right here, you'll see white and red. And when they join up with their pollen and ovum, 
they produce offspring that are pink. So let's look at that. For instance, if we got a red color in Snapdragons, and then we have the white, little r, little r, and they're all going to be produced when this pollen grain fertilizes that little r. They're all going to have big r, little r. But instead of it being red, like we've learned in the law of dominance, this is incompletely dominant, which means you have more of a blending of the color, like paint or mixing. So it gets that kind of pink color. So I hope this has helped you understand the different ways you can use a Punnett squares and help help you uh, predict as well as uh, track uh, what inheritance uh, is, is going to be uh, taking place. Make sure you remember all of the uh, ratios, uh, the percentages, and of course the lingo. That, that's the hard part. For instance, like what's heterozygous, homozygous, etc. But I hope this has helped. And um, if you really don't understand what, really what I'm talking about, two videos you should check uh, up on before you listen to this one then. Uh, it is, of course, the genetics lingo and also the one on Mendelian genetics. Those two are probably better suited for you to watch beforehand um, or, or, or afterwards if you still don't understand after all this. So we'll be seeing you in lab very shortly, and I hope you have a good rest of the day. Thanks.